Hello, denizens of the internet. The other day, George Lucas did me a favor. He freed me from Star Wars. Thank you, George. I will explain, but first, let me ramble. I saw the very first Toronto showing of it at the University Theater in 1977. Uh, does that give me special respect or insight? No, it, it does give me an understanding of the zeitgeist of the time, its immediate effect on pop culture. I still have the Burger King glass collection. Movies were important then. The first three installments were really and truly communal events, so I can claim my love for Star Wars goes beyond having only watched it on VHS or DVD even at the insistence of a loving parent. I was there, and I remember. I guess it's that baggage I have carried with me throughout the decades. Being a Star Wars fan has never been easy. I thought the prequels were hot mess for the most part, so please don't accuse me of worshipping at the altar of George Lucas. But Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be treated to the utter trash that was Disney Wars. If only The Force Awakens had been the massive failure it deserved to be, maybe things would have been different, but it was just barely good enough and became a megaton success built on the pent-up demand for the franchise. The Disney Brain Trust counted their beans and were delirious. Crystal meth will do that, but it will also make you paranoid. But as it happened, the J.J. Abrams abomination happened to coincide with a fairly mature social media ecosystem that had been um, well fed by fans and yearly fan fests. Both Facebook and Twitter had been around for almost 10 years. And frankly, it has also been a bit weird, especially the way social media is able to keep things active. You won't believe this, but we actually forgot about Star Wars after each movie came out and did other things with our lives. Shocking, I, I know. And then there's YouTube, of course. We tend to gnaw on the bones of pop culture milestones for far longer than is mentally healthy. Film Threat put Star Wars on trial in a huge multi-episode video extravaganza. Was it obsessive? Sure. It was exhausting and entertaining. I dare to think what would have happened if YouTube was around when the prequels debut. But now is now, and we have a Death Star-sized hate on Disney for what they did to our Star Wars. Let me qualify that. I can't decide if it's what they actually produced or us projecting what they should have produced. You see, we have a very big issue. We think we own Star Wars. And we actually do suffer from Star Wars derangement syndrome. Why didn't Disney do what we wanted, damn it? But worst of all, we have fashioned a mythical version of George Lucas. We are constantly opining. Oh, if George hadn't sold out to Disney, what would he have done? How much better it would have been having conveniently converted the prequels to nostalgia. Oh, if only J.J. had gone with the scripts George had written, which I haven't seen. Has uh, anyone seen them? Maybe the Indiana Jones movie should have been Indiana Jones and the Search for George's Star Wars scripts. Many of us suffer under the delusion that he's one of us. Of course, we know that he's not. We are all aware of his limitations and have discussed them <laughs> endlessly already, but I was fine with the imaginary George Lucas because he gave me uh, hope. But with the recent announcement that George is backing Disney and CEO Bob Iger in the company's proxy fight with activist investor, investor uh, uh, Nelson Peltz, the veil has lifted. And let's be serious, he was never one of us. Billionaires chum with billionaires, and it was Iger who made him a billionaire. Does anyone seriously think George would turn on Iger? It also made me think, as they are both died in the wool Democrats, perhaps George was all gung-ho on the castration of Star Wars, and we just chose to ignore the evidence. 
I can watch the Acolyte trailer now in peace and laugh at its awfulness. I'm happier now that the real George Lucas has revealed himself to me. I no longer have to hope. I'm free knowing that George was always Emperor Palpatine. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you.